In this lesson, we'll learn how we can link certain objects in our scene to only certain lights. Okay, so here's sort of a scenario that you may run into as you start to uh, work inside of Cinema 4D and start to experiment with some of your own light setups. In this situation, we have two lights in my scene. Uh, we have a blue light over here and then sort of a red light. Now, if I come in and just take a quick render at what we have, just using my interactive render region, Alt-R on my keyboard, you can see sort of what we have. So a little bit of blue light that is shining in from this side and some red light that is shining over from this side. Now, as you start to experiment and start to get more complex light setups, you may see situations or you may find yourself in a situation where maybe we have certain objects in the scene that we don't want to be affected by certain lights. Well, in Cinema 4D, we do that through a process called exclusion. So let's go and first find our light that we want to make some changes to. Let's say we want maybe this middle cone to no longer be affected by the red light. So in that sort of a situation, we need to first go in. Let's get the red light, which I have named up here. And if we go over into this Project tab, this is where we can start to get into Light Exclusion. So right now, we have our mode, which is set to Include or Exclude. By default, it should be set to Exclude. Now what we can do is drop in the objects from our Object Manager that we want to be excluded from the illumination of this particular light. So in this case, let's say this cone right here, which if we take a look, that's going to be cone 1. So now we're going to go back to our red light, and let's grab cone 1 and drop it into my list. So now, if you take a look, you can see that this middle cone is no longer receiving any sort of illumination from the red light, but it is still receiving illumination from the blue light. So this mode that we have here is very, very important because that determines exactly what is going to happen here. Right now we have the mode set to exclude, and we have that exclude uh, list here. Only thing that's in here is cone 1. So right now cone 1 is the only thing being excluded from the illumination of this red light, and that's exactly what we see here. Now we could flip this around and set it to include. Now you can see everything in my scene is uh, no longer having any sort of influence by the red light except for cone 1. Because now we flipped it around because now cone 1 is the only thing being included in the illumination of my red light. So this becomes sort of a useful way of uh, really coming in and just fine-tuning. If you have everything in your scene illuminated just perfectly, but maybe you have one or two objects that you just want to receive a little bit of extra illumination, you can drop in a new light source and have only those couple of objects in your scene included in that illumination. Likewise, if the illumination looks good throughout your entire scene, but maybe just one or object or one or two objects is maybe uh, receiving a little bit more blown out light or you don't really like the illumination effect on one or two objects, again, take those one or two objects, drop them in there, and then we could just set that mode to exclude. And now everything in your scene still looks great, except for those couple of objects. Now, in addition to just having the ability to include or exclude certain objects, we can actually get really, really controlled with this and start to include or exclude certain uh, properties of the light. So within this cone, we have the ability to control either direct illumination, uh, specular illumination, or shadows. That's what these three little icons right here do. So right now, these three options are all enabled. You can see if I click on them, they start to become sort of grayed out. Now, this uh, option here, or these options that we have, are all tied in to whatever mode that we have. So right now, with the mode set to exclude, it's excluding direct illumination from the light, it's excluding specular illumination, and it's excluding shadows. But let's say we want to, let's say, gray that out. Now, if you look closely, when I gray that out, the shadows from that red light return. Because now this option is grayed out, shadows are no longer being excluded from the illumination of that red light. Okay, if I turn that back on, let's say I gray out this uh, direct illumination. Now you can see we get direct illumination, but no shadows from that light. And again, that's because now this option is grayed out, which means the direct illumination is no longer being excluded from the light. Now again, this can all start to flip around, so if I set the mode back to include, you can see now if I gray that out, uh, 
there's no illumination because at this point we are no longer including the direct illumination from uh, that surface. So the mode that you have chosen here and the options that you have chosen here are very, very closely tied into each other. And that's going to be really, really important to understand as you start to uh, get into these different light inclusion and exclusions. So if I go back and let's say want to get some specular illumination, again, gray that out. And that means that now specular illumination from that red light is no longer being excluded from that object, but we're still excluding direct illumination and we're still excluding shadows which is starting to give us this effect. We're no longer getting any direct illumination, but if you look closely, you can still see a little bit of that red specular highlight coming from that red light. So you can start to see where we can get really, really controlled with a lot of these options. And we can drag as many objects as you want into this exclude list. If you want to ever remove any objects, you could just simply right click and either remove that particular object, or if you have multiple objects listed in here, you could remove all. There we go. And so now uh, we no longer have anything listed in here, which means we are no longer excluding anything from the illumination of that light. So this ability to include and exclude certain objects, definitely really, really useful. Uh, probably a fairly specialized option. You may not find yourself using this feature uh, very often, but in situations where you do need it, it is really, really nice to have that. Now, one thing that I want to point out is uh, in our previous lesson, we looked at the compositing tags, and we saw that there was an exclude tab in our compositing tag. Now, the exclude option that we have in our lights and the exclude that we have in our compositing tag work very, very differently, so you don't want to confuse the two. So to demonstrate this, uh, in this scene, I have just a really, really simple orange sphere and a couple of planes. Now, this uh, plane they have sort of a reflective material on them. So if I come in and, and render this, again, this is just a very, very simple example, but you can see we have this orange sphere that's being reflected in this back plane, and it's being reflected in this floor plane as well. Now, let's take a look at our compositing tag. This is what we looked at in our previous lesson, and I just really want to follow up on this uh, so you can see the difference between uh, the exclude that we looked at just a moment ago and the exclude that we looked at in our previous lesson. So here's my sphere with a compositing tag applied. Now if I come in and let's say disable the option for this uh, sphere to be seen by reflection, if I turn that off, now the object is no longer seen in the reflection of anything in my scene. So this is sort of a global switch. Uh, by disabling this option, this sphere is no longer going to be seen in the reflection of anything in my scene. But what if I don't want that? What if I still want it to be visible in the reflections of certain objects but not in the reflections of others. Well, that's where this exclusion option comes in. So in order for this exclusion to work, what we need to do is leave this global flag turned on. So uh, essentially, we're not going to adjust anything here. Now, this exclusion uh, applies for reflection, it applies for refraction, and it applies to transparency. So these three guys uh, can fit into this exclusion. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's say this back plane Let's drop it into my exclusion list. And now if you look, you can see that this back plane is no longer showing the reflections of this sphere, but the ground plane still is. So in this exclusion, we have the back plane, which is again being excluded from the compositing. Now this back plane, we have uh, transparency. This middle option, we have refraction. And this last one, we have reflection. So what we have is a situation where this back plane, this uh, reflection option is enabled. So that means that reflections are being excluded from this orange sphere, which is what we have the compositing tag applied to. It gets kind of confusing, so um, really, really be mindful of what you have set in your compositing tags. Um, if you come back to a scene and you start to set this up and then several days later or several weeks later you come back and start to make adjustments it can be really really difficult to understand and remember what compositing tags you have set up and what sort of flags you have enabled on certain objects so I would be really really careful about using the exclusion in your compositing tags but that is definitely an option if you want to get just a little bit more control so by let's say graying out the reflections you can see the reflections now by being grayed out. That means that reflections are no longer being excluded 
from this object, or this object is no longer being excluded from the reflections of um, that back plane. So, like I said, definitely useful to have, but very, very specialized for sure. Okay, so that's a look at the process of linking certain lights to certain objects and how we can start to exclude certain objects from other objects calculations with the compositing tag.